All right. How's everybody doing? My name is Jeffrey Remedios, and I have the uh, privilege and honor of being the chair of the board of the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm actually in the music business, and uh, over the course of my career, and most recently as the CEO of Universal Music, I've gotten the opportunity to work with all kinds of artists. And I can tell you this, very few have as incredible and, ha and as a special a story as this incredible group that you just saw and put themselves out there so powerfully and so vulnerably with such an incredible relationship with their fans. It's, uh, it's very special. Now, please join me in welcoming the team but behind Hate to Love, Nickelback. Producer Ben Jones. <laughs> Director Lee Brooks. And of course, Chad Kroger, Michael Kroger, Ryan Peake, and Daniel Adair, Nickelback. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Let's have That's a seat. Time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, Lee, I wanted to start with you. Uh, you know, you mentioned this a bit. You started to film the band back in 2017. Yeah. And uh, you ended up with a documentary six years later celebrating a band through the lens of... Of, uh, of all kinds of different angles. Like, how, how did that happen? Um, I, I, I've, I've no idea, to be honest. <laughs> it, was, it just grew from um, an initial, the initial uh, shoot for an EPK for Feed the Machine. But in doing that, we ended up shooting the, the backbone of all the interviews in the main film. So we knew we had something more than an EPK. But every few weeks, it was, oh, let's get a bit of B-roll for that. So I went to Indiana. And then the guy said, we're going back to Hannah to, to play a gig. I'm like, well, we need to go film that. No, still no plan for a documentary. No trajectory of where it was going. Um, it's like the song, we were just stumbling in and stumbling around with it. You Lee's know? just an opportunist, that's all. He was I really just, am. <laughs> it's I like really an ambulance am. chaser on myself with us. <laughs> well, wow. Well, okay, so Ben, over to you then. You're a British radio presenter, and uh, you had a relationship with the band, and that brings like a... I guess like a specific perspective to filmmaking. And so, you know. Yeah, numb. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, can you talk to us a little bit about like, you know, putting this together? Like, how does this all come together? Well, I, I had played them on the radio for the, for the first time back in 2001, and, and we'd always got on when we did our interviews, and we always sort of felt like that, those conversations were a little bit different to maybe other conversations that you've done with, with other media, and there was just a good connection. That's because you and I have gone out in London and gotten drunk together many times. There is, yeah. <laughs> what, what goes on Truth Thursdays be on tour. Um, we just felt like there was some good stuff there, and I, I'd spent time with them all, and I realized there were good stories there. We'd stayed in touch, and then obviously I, I got this sort of bizarre phone call or email, I forget which now, back in 2017, about doing the, the Feed the Machine promo, and you know they were like, well, would you come out and film some stuff? And well, I think the answer is we definitely filmed some stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we filmed some <laughs> we stuff. We filmed some stuff, yeah. Wow, awesome. Well, let me, uh, let me turn this over to the guys for a second. You know, you're, you're, no, you're no strangers to sharing your stories, putting yourself out there, um, filming, uh, recording. How does it feel to, to make a, a film in this way and put yourselves out there in this way? Oh, <laughs> uh, I still Pretty. can't believe it's actually finished. We, we, we were, said that earlier in an interview. I can't believe it's actually done now. I was going to say, we are done, right? We're yeah. going to shoot some more, right, guys? Actually, yeah. there's one more scene to shoot. Oh, 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 no. Down. no. Um, it's, a, it's something like, I mean, there's a certain level, level of uh, vulnerability um, you have to show, I guess, if you want to be honest about about the story and the career, and, and again, that, about that kind of stuff, the more, you know, the, the, about the title is like, that's just a small part of the story, but we felt we had to address it and talk about it and at least give our perspective on it. Uh, there's, as you've seen, there's more to the documentary than that. 
Um, but uh, that's, uh, it, it takes, sometimes it takes a bit of poking and prodding from these guys um, to kind of feel comfortable to open up. Like Ben said, we'd known him for a while and, and Lee, who's instant connections, who's everybody met him, it, everybody's easy to talk to and it's just like, it's just the cameras kind of start to disappear after a while. So it's, that's, that's nice. I, was, I will also add that, um, you know, I've seen them being interviewed a number of times about some of the, the more um, sensitive issues that I think our film addresses. And frankly, I'm kind of almost over it on, yeah. on their behalf. Like, that ship has sailed, that, those questions have been asked, and I hope now, really, for the sake of fans, music fans, Nickelback fans, and the band themselves, maybe they don't have to answer those questions anymore because that film does it, and that is why I think... Hallelujah! <laughs> I think, I think the title, I think the title is very important. It's, it's hate to love, not the other way around. And uh, having seen them on their recent tour, what's really interesting is the demographic of the fans has changed massively as well. I think there are obviously still fans there from, from day one, but going out and seeing the Get Rolling tour, seeing the younger demographic of fans who are just there to enjoy great music, presented by great artists at great venues. Isn't that what live music is all about? Yeah. Yes. 100%. Right? Bless you. So, on some level, you know, interviews, promo, uh, you know, kind of comes with the gig. And you've put together this incredible film. Is there, uh, and you talked about some of the impact that the, film's, the film is having. Is there, you know, is that the part of it that you'd say you're most proud of? Are there other parts of this film that, you know, for anybody here that you'd say you're the most proud of in terms of what you put out there vulnerably um, or how it, you know, how it, it's going to get connected with, with fans? Like, what part of it is, uh, is the part that you're like, yeah? I don't know if there's, if I can necessarily point to a specific part. Um, for me, the whole impetus of doing this, this whole thing was just to kind of document the history of the band. That's, that's how we started it. It was a really ramshackle way of starting something. Um, and, uh, and we were just kind of filming as we were going on. And for me, it was like, well, I wanted to document, you know, take old footage that we've got, digitize it, throw it in there, and just have this kind of history of the band for our family's sake. And so that just show, you know, our kids and, and, and whatnot, like, I mean, I don't know if you know, we're not really organized, a bunch of guys, <laughs> but, but we, we try to make it seem that way. And we finally got our um, shit together and, uh, and put it together as a package. And I, that's kind of as far down the road as I was looking at the, at the time. And, uh, and these guys, you know, in, in with, their, with their help and guidance kind of, you know, formed this thing that's... It's came along kicking and screaming. Kick, kick, kicking and <laughs> some of us more Let's than others. Let's make a documentary. Some of us more than others. No, um, but 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 my my point is is that I, it turned out to be more than what I had, had hoped for, and and uh, that's kind of we we've, we've been very lucky. A lot of the things that we do, we're kind of like, wow, this turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. <laughs> and uh, and so I'm I'm we really have low happy expectations, man. Yeah, right. You set the bar low, you're never disappointed. Um, no, these guys did a great job. So that, that for me, that was my favorite part is that we f we finished this thing and we kind of achieved what we wanted to achieve. So and then more. Can I just take a, a moment just to sort of say a thanks to the four members of the band as well? Because actually, you know, tackling some of the issues that we talked about, uh, digging a little deeper into some of the stories, it's not anyone's comfort zone really to be in that. So for all that, to allow us to tackle those topics and to do those, I'm, I'm very grateful that you let us bug the shit out Amen. of you. For six all of years. these people just got to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Everybody here just got to watch us have a therapy session. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's going to bill us too, I'm sure of it. At, yeah, some sort. That. At one point in time, they were following us for so long with these cameras, and I was so over it that they finally came up with this idea. They're like, all right, let's tell Chad that he can play pool and drink beer and just answer the odd question. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. It. That's and a I'm true like, story. I thought it worked well. Um, Chad's like, all right, yeah, I'll good. do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I, I'll tell you what I'm most proud of, of this is, it's like when the band started, they did it, they all pulled together, 
they dragged the ball down the field and they made it work and somehow they got to where they did and the film is kind of a carbon copy of that. We tagged along for that ride. None of us knew what we were doing. I wasn't a filmmaker at the beginning of this and I've made a film since um, and made something in this that I'm just so proud of. This is, this is like one of the best moments of my life tonight, today. So thank you. Thank you. Here, here, here. here. Well deserved, buddy. Well deserved, buddy. Thank you. And to speak to that, to, to give some validity to that, we were backstage and when the film ended and you guys all applaud, he had tears running down his face. I already gave you a hug. I don't oh, know how to give you another one. Get out of here. There he goes. <laughs> Our lawyer uh, just texted us as well. We were backstage, and John Simpkin, who's got the sunglasses on for some reason, in the. Oh, really, really filthy him sunglasses. He, he, filthy uh, sunglasses as well. I don't know what he's. Could you it's an improvement to his sunglasses. looks, really. Uh, it was hilarious. Anyway, he's, he's like, uh, he's, in, he's, he's in Vancouver. And he's like, will somebody please tell me what's going on? He's like, I'm, so I'm on pins and needles. Is anybody, and he, we're on a group text, and, and he, Ryan just texts back. And if this doesn't show the sense of humor of the band. Uh, as soon as you came on the screen, uh, the entire audience booed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him any different, yeah. please. And he's like, he loved it. He's like very he fucking it. funny. He deserves every little bit of it. Awesome. Uh, you started to touch on this. This is a world premiere gala presentation at the Toronto International Film Festival at Roy Thompson Hall in front of the best film audience in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you made this film, like, when, when did you see it and go, yeah, this is where this film's going. Like, we're gonna just, have this Just moment. a moment ago. <laughs> yeah, really, literally. You get so immersed in these things sometimes, it's like, you, you, it's, it's easy to lose perspective. It really is. I mean, we do it with an album. We'll do it, and you can just like go over and over and always improve and tweak and everything. And when do you let it go? It's it's, it's tough. It's tough to decide that. But uh, it basically, it's money. We ran out of money. So I think I, I think the band I think the band are grateful no, not true. to whoever know. organized us being at TIFF because it was the dotted line that was like, "That's the end of the <laughs> yeah. film. That's the end of the documentary. We've got to get it ready for September." Stop yeah. tweaking it. Leave it I alone. I feel like there's going to be three more cuts coming. Yeah, there is. It's like a director's, <laughs> a director's cut. cut. I, tell you, yeah. I felt like I've been in the delivery room for about six years now. It's been insane. So I have a bunch more questions here, but rather than go to them before we run out of time, I thought I might turn it to the crowd and see if there's a question or two that anyone might want to ask. Nickelback oh, no, fans never want to get involved. <laughs> no, they're, they're always shy and retiring. All right. Oh, oh. oh, she jumped in front of you. What's that? Sorry, Ziggy. Right. So I, if I heard the question right, it was... When will this be available for the public? We will, we will let you know very soon. <laughs> Check out our socials. Uh, yeah, well, I, we're, we're hoping very soon we've got, it, it's complicated, <laughs> but it, it, is, it is coming out hopefully soon. It, it's I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The reason you come to these things is because you sell, you're selling the product. So as soon as we sell this to somebody, it's going to come to your, it's so going to come to your door. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Do you think anyone should buy it? Netflix. Do you think anyone should buy it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. Thanks. So are you in the back, second row there? What was that? Here, here. That's very kind. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. You've had so much success. You know, one of the best selling albums, you know, groups of all time. Is there somebody that you've met, some of your musical heroes, that you're starstruck by? So maybe if, as you think about that, just for everyone, if they didn't hear the question, I think it was, you know, you, you've done all, all this incredible stuff. You've accomplished so much. You've met all sorts of people. Uh, what's it like to meet a musical hero? Is there someone in particular you've met that uh, you've been starstruck by? A bit starstruck. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's a yacht time. I, I've got a weird mantra where I was like, I normally don't like to meet people that I uh, appreciate the music or the film and stuff like that, because I said, if you don't, then you don't get let down. Uh, which is probably a terrible way to do it, but I, I, am also, I also feel weird about going up and meeting you know, stars and stuff like that. But I did... Um, I met Willie Nelson once. He didn't say you had to like the person. No, he just I know. said, were you starstruck? Starstruck. starstruck. 
I, uh, I met Willie Nelson once. We were on his bus uh, doing nothing. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and he was a really, he was a really sweet, nice, nice guy. He is a sweet, nice guy. Uh, I rode the elevator down with Prince once. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I, it's, it's, it's strange. He's not. He, he's not very tall, but uh, but like just you. You could just this stuff, you just feel it with some people. And it's just like it's. He was something else. I feel Did like I, you're, I feel like you're leaving somebody out of that. How about when the, we were? Uh, when we I've were, forgotten a lot. When we were shopping for management, uh, not that long ago. Oh yeah. And I met Sting. And Sting. <laughs> <clears throat> I love Sting. I'm a huge Sting fan. And I would not love Please. Sting to the level I love Sting if you didn't love Sting sure. to the level you love Sting. Sure. So when you go down, so we were sitting there at, uh, just going through all these, we were in meetings. I think we were in booking agent meetings at the yeah. time because we kind of cleaned house on this last record and we're like, okay, let's start with some fresh faces here and, and, uh, and, and get on down the road. And someone goes... Sting is, and we're at, we're at the Sunset Marquee a Hotel in Los Angeles. Hang on, we went the day before though. We went downstairs and met him down, downstairs. Uh, doesn't mean, the, yeah, but you gotta, you, you're getting to that? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting There's this. a reason. I, oh no, I'm get, that's the first one. Okay, so, there's gonna be so a little saltiness here. They, they, someone came to us and said in one of the meetings, they're like, there's a recording studio in the basement of this, of this hotel. And they said, Sting is downstairs and he'd like to say hi. And we're all like, I think we were mid-meeting. We're like, meeting's over. Let's go. <laughs> And uh, we go downstairs, and I'm thinking to myself, because his real name is Gordon Sumners. And so I'm like, is he going to lead with Sting, or is he going to say I'm Gordon? I'm like, what's he going to say? <laughs> and uh, we get down there, and I'm like, and right away, and I don't even think, I, I think he just kind of opened his mouth, and things were coming out, and I was like, Jesus, it's fucking Sting. <laughs> and he said, I, and I, at the time, he said, and he was holding a guitar. Yeah. And he said, hi, I'm Sting. I said, hi, I'm Chad. It's great to meet you. I'm a huge fan. And the next dumb thing that came out of my mouth because he was holding a guitar and I said, too many strings. <laughs> I'm like, and he just kind of looked at me, laughed, you know, because he's a bass player, right? And, I, and I'm like, why did I say that? <laughs> too many strings. He's <laughs> fucking Sting. <laughs> like, too many strings. Yeah. Uh, and fuck, and he, he just sort of chuckled a little bit. Now the next day, we're in another meeting. Um, with uh, CAA. Wait, do you got time here? You got time? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, just now you can so, see why it took six years. There you go. <laughs> no shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> that was really good. Couldn't get him talking this much when the cameras were right, rolling. Exactly. <laughs> so we're in this meeting with CAA. It's the biggest booking agency in the world, hands down. They've got the most. They they handle everything from movie stars to Rock stars to everybody, right? So we're in a meeting with them, and the, the, the head of uh, CAA must have brought 20 people with him, Rob Light. And uh, Sting is walking by with his wife, uh, Trudy, is that right? Yeah. Uh, Sting and Trudy are walking by, and uh, Rob sort of looks over his head and goes, oh! And Sting walks right up to the meeting. The, the meeting was sort of outside, it was whatever, it's this courtyard sort of feel. And he walks right up, and. He says hi to, you know, there's a big hug with him and Rob, and da, 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 da. and then he comes to the table and goes, I bet you're wondering why I've interrupted this meeting. And he starts telling these jokes kind of thing, right? And then he sees Ryan, and he just met him the day before. He goes, hey, and gives him a big hug. And I'm looking, I'm like, what did you guys do last night? So I'm looking at Ryan going. And I'm hugging him. Hey. Yeah. At, halfway through the hug, Sting now realizes he has no fucking clue who he's hugging. That's not true. Ryan now knows that Sting, who's hugging him, does no idea and thought he was someone else. Yeah. And I'm watching the whole thing from about eight inches away, and I'm like, oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> this massive mistake made him the happiest oh, yeah. man on the planet. Great. It was great. Well, there you go. I've got one more, and this is fantastic. Oh, carry on. <laughs> Through... Through uh, most of Ryan's life, when his hair is maybe a little bit shorter than that, he gets called, he's been re referred to as Tom Cruise a lot. Tom Cruise, he gets Tom Cruise a lot. So we're in New York and we're doing, what was that TV show called? T uh, TRL. So we're doing TRL in New York. And they've got everybody, they've got movie stars and bands and artists and whatnot. So we're doing TRL and, and uh, we, so we get up and we do this exact same thing. And there's a little live audience, and whatnot, and, and then we get, and then we realize, oh, Tom Cruise is on the show, and we're walking 
towards the green room and in a hallway, about like, it's this tiny hallway and I'm right behind him. And we're walking along and here comes Tom Cruise. <laughs> and I've got front row seats to, and this is fantastic. Tom's sort of looking down and he's got bodyguards in front of him, bodyguards behind him, and you know, and we've got the band lined up and we're just cruising down. And Tom kind of looks, and as he's walking, he looks and he locks eyes with Peak, and he looks down, then he goes like this. <laughs> as we walk past him, we get to the end of the hallway, and I go, hey, and he goes, not a fucking word. <laughs> and I'm like, even Tom thinks you look like Tom. I'll take that. I'll take that. There you go. All right, I think... Why didn't you tell that in the documentary? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I got 20 more. Oh, I know. Okay. There's oh, got to be a second Nicolai. documentary. Don't worry. Good. So... <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, we're, we've run out of time. Can however... I just, can, I however just, can I just double check please. that everybody is coming to the gig however, this evening? Is everybody coming to the show? Nickelback doing a free show. Seven o'clock, Festival Street, Nickelback, Ben, Lee, guys, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thank you, Tiff. Thank you, Tiff. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>